Hi, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. We have a cartoon-loving edition on this episode. Delighted to be talking with comics creator Craig Cravens. Craig, thank you for jumping in on a cold morning. And thank you also for giving a visual shout-out to several cartoonists there behind you. I see Lex Fajardo back there, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this I think this was one of the earlier Zoom meetings for the National Cartoonist Society. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anything that you'd like to say about that particular society before we talk a little bit about your connecting to craft? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. We've we've spent the last two and a half years working hard to try to update the National Cartoonist Society from its beginnings in the late '40s and early '50s, and trying to get past some of the. We found out that some of the the legal language in our bylaws was actually uh, set up in the 1970s. Uh -huh. uh, we, we had a parliamentarian that could actually pin it down to 1971. Wow. And yeah, we're overdue for some work. So we've uh, we've advanced ourselves into the 21st century and have new membership tiers. So if you've ever thought, hey, I'm I'm a cartoonist. I just don't think I qualify for the NCS because uh -huh. that's the old guys that do comic strips in the newspapers. That's that's not it anymore. So, you know, by all means, jump in there and. Uh, you can apply online. Takes just a few minutes. Nice, nice. Um, well, speaking of that history of comics and newspaper comics and things like that, I know that um, you've worked on Buckets, Hubris. I believe you have some earlier work that I unfortunately haven't seen, but I'm very familiar with uh, both of those strips. So curious about what connected you with cartooning. Um the the clever anecdote that i've worked up over the years is yes. you know, based on a single memory but uh i think i remember the day that i was actually just told by my grandfather yeah there's new comic strips in the newspaper every day they they show up at the door every day they're different every day uh -huh, uh -huh. at any rate yeah so it was pointed out to me hey you know the, these comic strips in the newspaper are new every day and it hadn't occurred to me because this was back when you had to wait until Saturday morning to see any cartoons on the uh, on the television. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so if you're thinking, really, there's there's just sheets of of comic strips brand new in the newspaper every day, and all I got to do is grab Dad's newspaper and check them out. All right, so I think I said, oh, I'd I'd like to draw cartoons. I'd like to be a cartooner after I'd gotten used to the idea and when a five or six year old says that instead of i want to be a policeman or i want to be a fireman everybody goes oh really cartoons no no kidding you know tell us about that what do you what do you what are you thinking there kid uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, yeah because this was when you still saw cartoonists on uh you know johnny carson yeah. every night you know the, uh, the guy that did uh little abner would would he was a regular guest uh -huh. So, you know, when you tell your grandparents, hey, I want to be a cartoonist, they go, really? You know, that, that's uh, that's a good job to have if you can do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, you know, uh, if you give a if you give a small child that kind of a, uh, that kind of attention, it, it <laughs> locks into their brains. Yeah. And a few years later, you know, they're just like, well, I still want that. I want that again. You know, give me attention and I'll I'll keep saying this answer. Yeah. So that was that was the beginning of I'd like to be a cartoonist. And then it was, you know, hey, there's comic books and hey, there's, you know, there was always more and more and more stuff. Once you mm -hmm. get into it, one of the first cartoonists I ever met because my father said, oh, you want to be a cartoonist? You want to meet one? You know, we'll go down to the newspaper. We'll go meet the, the editorial cartoonist at the newspaper. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you've got parents that uh, that will back you up and won't say, oh, it's a bad idea because you're going to starve to death. And they go instead, you know, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, your art teacher wants you to set up a booth at the at the fall art festival, and they've already paid for it. And if you don't do it, you're going to get in trouble because you've been doing caricatures of the vice principal. So <laughs> you know, she tells us that if uh, if you're making money as a caricaturist, the vice principal can't be mad that you drew him. There you oh. go. Oh well, yeah, fourteen years old, and then you get on the cover of the color supplement in the Sunday paper. For being the youngest artist in the art festival, and you, go, all right, I'm gonna keep doing this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Some nice uh, positive reinforcement. Yeah. It, yeah, it was uh, extraordinary reinforcement, really. And uh, that's probably a much longer answer than you really needed to that question. But 
yeah, all those things added up to, you know, hey, there there are many, many, many jobs to have as a cartoonist, and I want at least one of them. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I love the the stories that are tucked in that answer. That's amazing. A lot of a lot of weird stories. <laughs> uh, one of you know, my I would I would you know, small child. You know, you go go to the grocery store with your mom. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'd always say I'm gonna I'm gonna be over at the at the magazine rack. You know, you do your job, and if you need me for anything, you know, because you got to pick out your cereal. You know, me and my brother had to pick out a cereal, and then you just stand at the magazine rack and read Dennis the Menace and BC, and you know, because I always had little trade paperbacks. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so every week, I, you know, mom, can I have this? It's 35 cents, you know, because it's 1973 or something. I don't know. And she got, oh, it's 35 cents. Yeah, those are expensive. And uh, I got one that was Sergio Aragonis in Mad, right? You know, right. funny green cover and his style and everything. I still have that book and took it to an award they were giving to sergio at uh in georgia oh wow and we, we dovetailed our uh our southeast chapter annual meeting and an awards presentation it was the the jack davis award which was you know how jack davis drew the crazy you know cracked looking shoes and stuff they mm -hmm. make a bronze shoe that that's obviously his style that's <laughs> the jack davis award it's amazing but uh was able to to ask sergio if he would autograph this book and he goes oh yeah absolutely and he started he's looking at it and goes Where'd you get this? <laughs> uh, my, my mom brought, bought it for me. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, my mom bought it for me when I was seven or eight. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, I'll sign this. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the shelf now <laughs> with uh, with some, you know, next to some other fun autographs that, you know, thank heavens you can go to conventions and 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 cartoonist meetings now and and meet all these people and get autographs and talk with them it's fantastic yeah yeah a great way of connecting and uh, i know when i was growing up creating and the world of comics and film and everything just seemed light years away it was like a different universe yeah a few years back it, it did seem that way now you can kind of jump online and you can you can peek at the edges of it and mm -hmm. find find your way into it sitting at a at a computer screen it's very star trek it is. It is. It absolutely is. Um, you you were talking about some of those stories, and uh, just makes me think about the work that's required of being a cartoonist, which is coming up with something clever, something on the spot, uh, often. So I imagine living through a lot of experiences also helped you kind of keep that momentum going too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any any experience that you have is going to lead into a, a comic strip somewhere. Mm -hmm. anything that shapes the way that you think or the way that you emotionally react to anything is going to get stored in your head and bubble up eventually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you're primed for it because you've been writing a comic strip for 20 years or trying to write a web cartoon that's engaging and different and silly, you know, as you're, you're piddling around with odd ideas here, there and everywhere, you're suddenly going to bump up against things and you go, wait a minute. That's I, that is actually from when I was a child, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I remember my, my brother, uh, when we were very young and hanging around at my grandmother's house all, all summertime long, uh, we had a cousin that would occasionally stay next door at our uncle's house, <laughs> you know, whole family out there in the country. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and my, you know, we're blowing bubbles, you know, it's a weird afternoon, you know, in the middle of summertime, we, you know, somebody gave us some of the bubble things. We're having a good time. My brother says, I can blow bubbles without the little wand. Do it. Mm -hmm. So he takes the thing and, and puts some in his mouth and he's going to go and make bubble. That doesn't work. <laughs> and my cousin and I just, just cracked up and laughed at him because of course he's, he's coughing and choking and you can't get the taste out of his mouth. And yeah, he's yeah. just, yeah, he, he's freaking out. That that weird you know, afternoon silly story that you got, you know, dangling in your head, uh -huh. um, became the first buckets cartoon I ever wrote. Love it, love it. I started drawing them for Scott Stantis, and he said, you know, if you want to write anything, you know, you obviously you, you want to. I think you know, you just write down anything, 
and and pass it to me. See what you think. So I yeah I I, I did that one and you know you you got to strip out all the all the story around it. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, and you got to you got to turn it into a little magic trick. You know, because you got your three or four panels to deal with. So if you're if you're you know showing a kid blowing bubbles and then looking at the bottle and then chugging it and trying you know, and then the last one he's on his hands and knees and and you know coughing up you know stuff and his brother's going, you can't blow bubbles without the wand. <laughs> Reverse the story, you figure out how you're going to tell it. But yeah, you know, there's there's uh, hang on, I, I was I was going to say I've got a note here about something that popped into my head. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> uh, so just in a phone conversation yesterday and, you know, had to, had to write down a post-it note, mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it falls out of your mouth every so often. And you go, if I don't write that down, I'll never remember it later. But it was, uh, there's nothing on television and they keep interrupting it with more commercials. <laughs> so, you know, I've, how many times have you stood there and it's like, oh, I don't even, I don't even remember what I was watching. You know, when I was a kid, sure. there weren't this many commercials, and you're right, there weren't. You know, and now, you know, the number of people watching television is is down to the point where they've just got to cram more and more and more commercials in there. Uh -huh. so, uh, it's it's funny to point out that there's nothing on, which I suppose is supposed to make you think. You know, turn the TV off, but instead you go, and they just keep interrupting it. <laughs> So there's a comic strip alive in that state. There's, there's a comic strip that I think probably will get drawn today and tomorrow and uh, put into the newspaper in about two weeks. So there's your uh, <laughs> there's your spoiler. That's right. That's right. You heard it here first. Love it. Um, curious, uh, as I'm looking at those people behind you in, oh. in the Zoom, uh, I'm curious about people along the way that have been supporters um mentors uh, you mentioned your family but also thinking about people in, in the profession yeah um cartoonists are a, are a welcoming bunch mm. anyway um uh, richard krausen was the editorial cartoonist that i mentioned earlier uh -huh, and uh -huh. because he also occasionally taught banjo at my father's store when my dad said I'll take you down to the paper. You can meet the editorial cartoonist. He didn't say, who's also a friend of mine that teaches banjo at my store. He just said, I'll go introduce you to a cartoonist. Uh, so that was the first cartoonist that I met. And there was a local guy. This was all in Jackson, Tennessee. Little, little teeny oh, tiny. Nice, place. nice. At <laughs> 30, 40,000 people, you know, depending on what year I'm talking about. Uh, one exit off the interstate. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now it's a, a bunch of people and six exits off the interstate and, you know, it's all different. So, uh, but yeah, the, there was a local guy that was drawing his own comics, comic uh, books, but the technology at the time was him Xeroxing pages front and back and, and stapling them and taking them down to the old country store and, you know, having a box where if you donated a dollar or something, you, you know, take a comic book, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, that was, that was who, the locals were able to point to it's like oh there's richard you know he does editorial cartoons and there's that guy that does those comic books uh -huh, and then uh -huh. the, for the fall art festival when people came from memphis or bolivar or meaden or wherever and set up and did other stuff uh and one of those guys was uh a guy named malonis uh he and his brother uh one the, the, pete malonis did uh um uh sherlock holmes illustrations and t-shirts and you know book jackets and just whatever mm -hmm. brother did elvis t-shirts and stuff before uh i probably elvis presley elvis presley enterprises didn't exist yet um so he had his artwork that he put on shirts and he sold at at art stuff and they were an influence because i'm looking at them going so that guy can just draw you know dr watson and and you know make stuff and okay, cool. That's you know, you got buttons and you got hats and you got shirts and you got posters and prints. All right. So those people you point to and go, I could do something like that. And uh -huh. then uh -huh. the caricature thing came along. Uh and at 16, I got sent off to uh to uh, another town where I had some cousins and I could stay with them and work at a theme park doing caricatures. Where I met a bunch, you know, all the, the caricaturists that the other caricaturists looked up to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there was uh, uh, James Tucker, 
who now does animated Batman for Warner Brothers. Nice, uh, nice. Uh, Barry Crane that everybody just thought, oh, he's going to rule comic books in a few years. But uh, object lesson, he, he he did get into comic books fast. Uh, he He missed some deadlines early days. And it slowed his career down. I think he actually works for Warner Brothers now again. I've seen his work, you know, here and there, occasionally over the years. Um, so met people there that would steer me toward different styles and different ideas, and then moved to Memphis to go to school and called up the local paper and there's Scott Stannis, the editorial cartoonist, and I said, I don't know any cartoonist, and I'd like to, you know, mm-hmm. can I take you lunch and and pick your brains for you know, for answers that I need. And he went, of course, come on. So there's another, you know, good, good influence. And then by 1989, I'd heard of the Ohio State Festival of Cartoon Art, where you just get dropped into the middle of any festival like that, that you can ever go to go. Uh Because there's Mike Peters, who does Mother Goose and Grimm and editorial cartoons. And he's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, my buddy and I wandered back into the auditorium and we noticed that the guy that's setting up the slide projector looks just like Mike Peters. You think that's Mike Peters? I don't know. It might be Mike Peters. Let's go ask <laughs> Mike Peters. We ran and go, hey, Mr. Peters. He sat with us for a half an hour before everybody filed back in and they called him up on stage. Literally, he he broke off his conversation with these two kids <laughs> to march up on stage and do his big talk. And uh, it was it was insane how how generous he was with his time and attention. And there were other that's the first time I met Sergio Aragonis and he's running around like a fanboy. Here, here, take my picture, take my picture. <laughs> you know, and he, he's handing his camera to these kids and going, yeah, I, yeah I'm standing with this guy, you know, and take his picture. <laughs> that's his great. Back. Oh, it was insane. And once you realize that the world is real, that that whole world of cartooning and cartoonists is real you think i i can find a place in there uh-huh, and uh-huh. it's true you can you can't piddle at the edges of it and hope somebody grabs you and pulls you in right you've got to you know leap at it with you know arms and legs outstretched and land in it and immerse yourself and and do whatever it takes uh-huh. but it's there for you and the people that are already there are are welcoming we're happy to have anybody coming in and when I say we, it's very, it still seems weird. You still get the, uh, what do they call it? Imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm the membership chair for the national cartoonist society. How bizarre is it that anybody in the national cartoonist society knows who I am, much less was gracious enough to ask me if I'd like to be on the board <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, look after applications for new members. That's, that's insane. Oh, no. Well, well, here you are. And um, I guess the the best final question would be, where can people indeed connect with you, um, the organization, any any links, any particular work that you'd like to share about in our last couple of minutes? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, anybody that's looking for cartoonists to hang around with, go to nationalcartoonists.com and click on chapters there's a big long list of area chapters and if there's one close to you contact whoever's name is on there they've got an email address click on that contact them and say when's your next meeting can i come i'd like to be a guest i want to i want to meet everybody and that's part of the 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 chapter charter they they are supposed to say yes please you know come and meet everybody and see if you're a cartoonist and see if you're ready to join the ncs and if you're not we'll We'll give you some advice and we'll we'll lead you that direction. Now, if anybody's looking for anything that I do, uh it's weird. The stuff that I'm most proud of now, um, you can you can see in the in the uh my background, mm-hmm. the little square that I'm in has this oddball labs type background. It's desks and tables and things. It's up over this shoulder. Mm-hmm. There. Yeah. Uh that's actually a background from a training module you do you wind up doing dozens if not hundreds of of character you know characters running back and forth across these backgrounds to teach something in training modules safety or you know training you know uh uh, concepts and stuff nobody (laughs) outside of like williams pipeline and and people that are looking after hiv patients for the for the cdc 
and and you know some some weird uh military contractors and stuff i you know i keep doing these these training modules which are technically sequential art and they're fun and they you get to change your style and everyone you can't you can't go see those but you can <laughs> you can't go to hubriscomics.com you can go to gocomics.com slash the buckets mm-hmm. uh, you can go to mm-hmm. cravenscartoonist.com and see some of the advertising stuff and some of the caricature stuff um and uh or, or you can do what somebody would uh, uh we've got a, a member of the ncs that that is well deserving of a uh, uh of a of an honorary membership he's he's retired and he's been at it for many many years and he's influenced a lot of other people so when i put it to the board and and you know one of the other board members who knew who he was and some of the others are like oh they're, they're the younger you guys i don't know if we know this person he goes google the name mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So i can say the same thing you know if you if you really want to want to see the silly you know ridiculous things that i've done just google greg cravens and hit images and it, all this oddball stuff pops up very <laughs> odd, very strange. in the best way in the best way in, in the best possible strange way yes <laughs> well, well greg thank you for the time the the kindness uh the welcoming spirit and glad to share about your work in the ncs anytime yeah um and i don't know when this is going to gonna air or anything but uh the first weekend in march in atlanta georgia at the center mm-hmm. for public arts that first saturday of march there's going to be a whole pile of cartoonists there so let me let me double check i'm saying the first weekend but now that i think about it maybe let me let me make sure i'm not lying to everyone sure okay. sure uh technically it is the second week it's the ninth the ninth of march there's going to be cartoonists crawling all over the puppetry center and uh, we're going to be doing caricatures and handing out little free sketches and, and doing fun things. So if this goes out before that, everybody come look for us. And if it's after that, look online for photos because heaven knows there's going to be all kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be out in time for sure. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, well, thank you again and glad to talk anytime. Yep. Anytime you got any more questions about cartooning, if you don't contact me, you know, there's dozens and dozens of cartoonists out there. We're all ready to talk. Fantastic. Good good to have the invitation.